welcome to this edition of uh, View from the Pavilion or VFTP as we like to call it. Um, I have, uh, I guess, three main items we I want to talk to you about today. Um, and uh, I want to really kick off straight away because we, I guess, in interest of time. Um, the first one I want to talk to you about is the situation with uh, Muhammad Amir. Now, we know that, uh, you know, there's a lot of noise from Mr. Seti. Uh, there is uh, uh, statements, his interview with us and so on and so forth. But how do you see his uh, situation? And, and most importantly, do you think he should be allowed back? Two elements to this, in my opinion, Amir. Firstly, the uh, the Pakistan Cricket Board chairman and the Pakistan Cricket Board stance regards to Mohammad Amir. Um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with um, with that stance, in that they are really pushing for his return and uh, for his um, you know availability before the five year ban. Now, don't forget, these guys were banned for five years. Um, the problem I've got is this um, constant. You know, spiel from the chairman with regards to Mohammed Amir. It's Mohammed Amir this, Mohammed Amir that. I think whatever the Pakistan Cricket Board are trying to achieve, and whatever their aims are with regards to this cricketer, they should keep it behind closed doors. Whatever's discussed at the PC at the um, ICC meetings with regards to Mohammed Amir should not be um, you know communicated to the media because that just fuels more speculation. And it basically makes the Pakistan Cricket Board look in the cricketing world as if they are really trying to push and, um, you know, try and get some leeway for, for a banned cricketer. Now, as far as his return is concerned, the second uh, point to your question, um, as I say, he was banned for five years. In my opinion, as far as international cricket is uh, concerned, yes, I'm fine with him um, coming back after five years. Initially, I was one of those guys who thought, should these guys ever play for Pakistan again? You know, I, I was in two minds. I wasn't sure. But now, I think having thought about what's happened and, and obviously uh, being at the trial and, and um, you know, comprehended what, what's been going on with these guys, um, I'm OK with the fact that Mohammed Amir, after five years, can start playing for Pakistan again. The tricky part is, though whether he should be allowed to play some domestic and club cricket before the five-year ban. Now, in my opinion, I think there should be a short period of leeway given by the International Cricket Council, which I believe they're going to discuss in June at the next ICC meeting. In my opinion, a leeway of a few months here and there for Mohammed Amir um, is, is um, you know, adequate insofar as let him play some domestic cricket, let him play some club, some club cricket, so that when his five-year ban is up, you know, he's he's ready to play some first-class cricket, etc. Um, and who knows, you know, come back to international cricket shortly after his, his five-year ban. Mm. And, uh, you know, as as you probably know, I, I wrote in one of the one of the threads that I think they, they've chosen Mohamed Amir's case as it's, uh, I guess, a low-hanging fruit. Uh, and you know, in, in in interest of some political gain as well, because it looks good if you you know are seen as as uh, uh, you know carrying this case for for the nation type thing. So, do you think uh, there is an element of that with Muhammad Amir? I mean, in terms of uh, Asif and Salman, but I mean, you know, not not much is being said about them. I mean, first and foremost, Amir, I totally agree with what you're saying there. Um, Pax, uh, Pakistan Cricket Board Chairman Najim Sethi is is using the Mohammed Amir case for let's just say ulterior motives. Um, you know, Amir is the one who's had a lot of sympathy from the cricketing world, from within Pakistan and outside of Pakistan, uh, with regards to his ban. He's the golden boy. The other two, whether they play for Pakistan again or not, let's be honest about it. Um, not many people will be bothered whether they play for Pakistan again or not. But Mohammed Amir, he was the young, you know, fast bowler dashing fast bowler, the, the future great, he was predicted as, as the one who would lead Pakistan's bowling attack for years to come. And for him to be taken away like this was was a huge loss for Pakistan cricket. So I think Najim Sethi is, is using um, the case of Mohammed Amir for his own personal gain, first and foremost. Um, I mean, the, the other thing about, um, you know, the, the, the political element, etc., yeah, I think uh, undoubtedly um, Najim Sethi is, is utilising the case. But I, I think, you know, most importantly, what PCB chairman has to realise is that if the rule is changed, 
if the ICC changed the ruling, it won't be just for an individual case like Mohammed Amir's. It will be across the board. So that will mean that um, A, B, C, D, right through to Mohammed Amir, whoever is banned, they will all fall into the same under the same ruling and the same guidelines. So the ICC will not make the change if they do make any changes specifically for Mohammed Amir. Mm. Interesting, quite interesting. Um, and clearly something that's not going to be settled very, very quickly. I think there's going to be a lot of debate on that. Acha, next, uh, I wanted to talk to you, and I'm I actually I referred to, I think I just read a comment from you in one of the threads about uh, Javed Miyadad. Um, I think it was the Sharjah 6 thread where you mentioned the fact that, yes, he is a great legend, but uh, there seems to be some issue about him asking for money uh, for I guess, talking to the media. So what's the situation on that? What's the story on that? Yeah, I mean, Javed Miyadad is uh, an interesting character. Um, you know, I've had some interesting dealings with him um, when, when we've tried to do something with him. Um, Javed Miyadad, since he's retired, he's obviously uh, retired from playing. He's held some... Um, from coach to uh, various other positions. Um and a lot of people would say that he's had some pretty easy money paid to him over the years. You know, he's been commanding huge salary. And a lot of people uh, from within and outside of Pakistan Creed have, have actually asked the question, what is he being paid for? Now, recently, um, he resigned from his position. Um, nobody actually knows what his role was within Pakistan cricket. Um, unfortunately, um, I had a conversation with Javed Miyadad, and without going into too much detail, um, he basically wanted um, a lot of money for an interview. Now, this is really disappointing because as far as I'm concerned, uh, Javed Miyadad is, is a cricketing legend. And for him to behave like that, despite the explanation that Back Passion is a site run by volunteers, it's a non-profit making organisation, you know, Miyadad was adamant that um, he wanted a huge amount of money uh, for a 30-minute interview, which, you know, is, is, as I say, very, very disappointing. Normally, I wouldn't go um, and broadcast this on a, on a public platform. But I think in this case, I think people should know that sometimes these cricketing legends aren't always what they appear to be. Yeah, and, and, it, and that is a bit, uh, I guess, a bit sad that that's happened. But I guess that... That's life. <laughs> I mean, we've got to ex- accept that as well. Um, finally, I, I just wanted to um, talk to you about the uh, the issue that you raised today on the forum, and that is about the non-payment of dues to some of the uh, contracted cricketers. Um, and, and you seem to mention that they haven't been paid since December, for especially for the people who haven't been in international matches. Uh, how how did that come about? Uh, how did that conversation come about? And w- what's your take on that? Yeah, I've spoken with um, three centrally contracted uh, cricketers in um, various categories, um, some who have been playing international cricket recently and um, others who haven't been playing international cricket. So let me just clarify. Firstly, the only payments that contracted players have been receiving have been match fees for uh, matches that they've played in uh, for Pakistan and also if they've been part of a recent squad. Um December 2013 was the last time the centrally contracted players received their monthly retainer from the Pakistan Cricket Board. So anybody who is still centrally centrally contracted has not received a single rupee since December 2013, apart from those match fees that I've just referred to. Hmm. So the conversations were basically uh, quite similar with all three players, really, and they were all... Um, speaking about their concerns and their issues with regards to, A, the handling of the way the central contracts are done and issued. Secondly, the fact that, as I said, no payments have been made since December 2013. And thirdly, the issue of um, the lack of a players' union in in Pakistan. Because one of the players, the biggest gripe um, he had was that, you know, would something like this, five-month delay of monthly retainers, monthly salaries being paid, would that actually happen in, say, Australia, South Africa or England? I mean, there's absolutely no chance because those places have uh, players' unions. 
So what this player was mentioning in particular is the lack of a players' union within Pakistan uh, and, you know, how that would work and how that could um, be there, the focal point for actually approaching the Pakistan Cricket Board with their grievances and, and with their problems um, that they're encountering, both on a personal level and also as a group. Because, I mean, this affects all the contracted players. So, in, in theory, what would happen is if there was a players' union, then all these players would get together and have their representative approach their players' union uh, rep, who would then take their grievances and gripes to the Pakistan Cricket Board, organise a meeting and say, OK, these are the problems we're encountering. We've not been paid for four or five months. Um, you know, when, when, are these centrally con when, when are these central contracts going to be issued? When are they going to be sorted? Instead, at the moment in Pakistan Cricket, these guys are not being paid a penny. The ones who um, haven't played international cricket recently haven't been paid a single penny by the Pakistan Cricket Board. And, you know, that is a huge problem for them. Yeah, but I mean, as, as you also mentioned, um, there is some hesitation, I guess, uh, you know, from the powers that be to allow such a uh, association to be formed. Um, what do you think are the motives behind that, do you think? Well, I think there's a um, there's an element of fear, first and foremost, from the Pakistan Cricket Board side with regards to a players' union. And secondly, if a players' union was formed, then the Pakistan Cricket Board would be obliged to accept and recognise that players' union and listen to those grievances. Because at the moment, it's every individual player takes his grievance to the Pakistan Cricket Board via the Pakistan Cricket Board chairman or chief operating officer or one of the other senior officials. So basically, it's that one player speaking to the Pakistan Cricket Board with his grievance or his um, issue. However, if the um, um, players' union was formed, then as I mentioned earlier, you would have a scenario where 25, 20 players, 15 players would have um, a grievance and then all the grievances would be put into one and submitted to the Pakistan Cricket Board. Also got to remember that the Players Association wouldn't just be uh, international players, it would be across the whole country, domestic players, club, club cricketers, you know, non-international cricketers could also um, um, join that Players Association. So, you know, those grievances would then become a, a huge issue with regards to um, uh, how the Pakistan Cricket Board will actually have to deal with them. And there would be more pressure on the board um, if, if the grievance is from 40, 50, 60 players rather than one individual. Right. So uh, thank you very much, Saad. I think we've, we've covered a few very important topics uh, today, inshallah, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Salam.